to number one. Now, a group of military veterans have been packing up their camp near Mornan Smith after four days, which they believe have changed their lives. They turned up at the camp run by the charity Talking to Minds, suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. And if the evidence of the veterans is anything to go by, they return home with their traumas behind them. One man from St Ives, we have to call him Dave, was in a bus blown up by the IRA in Northern Ireland in 1988. Before nine o'clock, when the IRA's bomb ripped apart the soldiers' van, They'd come to Lisburn for the town's charity fun run, and while they took part, they left their vehicle parked and unattended. Once the run was over, they set off for their base in Londonderry, but they'd only driven a short distance when the bomb exploded. Glass shattered, people running. Uh, I froze in the car for a while. I'm just wondering what had happened. Uh, I jumped out of the car, and I seen two bodies. One was uh, on fire. The IRA had clearly been watching and waiting for the soldiers. Even travelling out of uniform and in an unmarked van, they were identified by their murderers. Inevitably, questions are now being asked about the wisdom of their decision to run. It's only a month since the army banned soldiers from taking part in the Belfast Marathon. After the murder of the two army corporals, it was felt to be too great a risk. If they thought their men were safe in this predominantly Protestant town, they were proved tragically wrong. But even as the Republican movement's newspaper was proclaiming the IRA's murderous attack, four soldiers who'd also taken part in the run and escaped returned to Lisbon to spend a few moments at the spot where their friends had died. Coming out of the army, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, psychogenic am amnesia and dissociative disorder. That's what was put on my discharge notes. And that was 22 years ago? That was 22 years ago, yeah. It was uh, 1988. I came out and presented those diagnoses to various people, but I was, I was struggling with, with such help. As a result of that PTSD, or what I experienced in Northern Ireland, was severe flashbacks. Actually experienced the event that includes smells, sights, sounds, sensations and feelings. And these were frightening events? Yeah, right? very, very frightening. My traumatic experience in, in, involved a, an explosion in Northern Ireland that involved a, a, a bus. And whenever I'm walking down the street, even up until last week, if I saw a bus, I could actually relive those events. Additional to that, I was afraid to go to sleep because at night I would have night tremors and nightmares I'd wake up sweating profusely and honestly believe that I'm still covered in blood. So that sweat is actual blood. And that's that, what that's, happened to you with the explosion? Yeah, yeah. So that comes back very vividly. So very, happy? very strong, vividly. I can smell the iron of the blood because that's what I believe that blood smells like, is iron. So I can smell that for hours afterwards when waking up. And if you're the next day, I've been difficulty walking down the street past a bus. If you're having yeah. these nightmares, how did it affect your daily life? Well, my day, daily functioning was uh, was affected vastly because I couldn't concentrate. I, I I couldn't carry out my own administration. My personal hygiene would be affected. Inability to work, just general inability to concentrate on the on, on the most meaningful smallest minute little things that you can think of such as making a cup of tea i'd put the tea bag in the cup and i'll get the milk out and i'll put too much milk in so i'll have to drink a bit of milk out and then i'll put two sugars in and i'll be waiting and waiting and waiting so it's affected your life oh yeah in very small ways yeah but you've been able to hold down a job i've been able to, to hold down the job i suppose Holding down the job was more an act, being able to, to find a coping strategy so that I could mask my inability to function properly. I would pretend that my daily function was okay, that it was normal. I would try to avoid and, and deny the truth that I had experienced a, a very traumatic event and it had affected my life. I had to mask that and trying to avoid situations where I'd be reminded of that, try not to get into discussion. So I'd, I'd even avoid having any type of military service at all. 
So no one knows at work that you've served in the military? Not really, no. There's only, there's only a handful of people that know that I've served in the military, let alone be blown up in Northern Ireland. How badly injured were you? My injuries involved quite a significant head injury, so now I'm left with the feeling of what is post-traumatic stress disorder or a psychological injury and what is a residual brain injury. Now, unfortunately, in Cornwall, there's, there's, no, there's no neuropsychology services. The nearest is in Bristol. And uh, it's very difficult to, to get some sort of assessment for what is a residual brain injury. You've been fighting this, battling it now for 22 years. Yeah. You've been here for about 36 hours. Yeah. You drove home to St Ives last night. Yeah. And you told me you were a changed man already. Oh, yes, yes. I arrived at 10 o'clock yesterday morning. Uh, I underge underwent some, some treatment, specialist treatment, as it's turned out, up until yesterday lunchtime. I had some lunch, and it was then that I thought something's changing here. I've got a, lift, a, a complete different attitude about me. There's a different aura around me. In the afternoon, we continued with that treatment, finished about 4 o'clock. I got in my car, I drove up the road, I stopped. I had a good look at myself, a good snapshot, and I can honestly say that I'm a changed person. I've achieved in 12 hours, or just that eight hours or so of treatment, I've achieved better results than I have out of three or four different agencies, government agencies included, and charities, than I have in the last 22 years. How's that? How's it happened? It sounds almost like a miracle. It sounds like a miracle. I don't know how it's happened. It's probably the technique. It's realising that you are human. There's no need to pretend that things didn't happen. It did happen. It's addressing those feelings, turning those feelings from a negative feeling into a positive feeling, associating it with past achievements, events and happiness. You know, those things has happened. Let's crack on, see where we go from here. How did you sleep last night? I slept remarkably well. I slept, I slept more hours consistently or continuously throughout the night than I have in the last seven or eight months. Is this going to last, though? I mean, that's the big question would be in your yeah. mind, I'm sure. In a year's time, if we're sitting here, will you still be saying the same thing, do you think? Yeah, I think now that I've got the knowledge of a technique to overcome those fears and anxieties and those intrusive thoughts, I'm referring in intrusive thoughts to you know, superficial beliefs, believing that bus coming down the road is the bus that I was on, those are now eliminated or eradicated. And I can employ that technique in the future because it's a simple technique to follow. Employ that and, and reduce or impair those feelings. You could walk past the bus now, could you? Yeah, I could go and I might get the bus home. That's Dave from St Ives talking to BBC Radio Cornwall's Dennis Nightingale. If you'd like to find out more about the charity which helped him, you can go to www.talkingtominds, and that's the number two, to minds.co.uk. Uh, we've had an update on the reason why there's this A13...